price we pay for coziness is terrible lighting, but it is really just so cozy. Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's a bit late in the day for me to start talking to you guys. Obviously you can't tell. It could be like 9am for all you know. But it is in fact after 3pm. I was out for all of the morning and then the early afternoon. I had to run an errand downtown in the morning. I thought, you know what, if I'm going down, I'm gonna make a day of it. So I went to, there's a monthly flea market. So I went to that and then I did like just some browsing, went to a couple bookshops. It was really fun. I did buy some books, so I will show you what I got. I bought The Cursed Hermit by, who's this by? I have to look. Chris Burton and Alexander Forbes. I think Forbes is the artist. This is the sequel to a graphic novel I read last October, so <laughs> everything comes around. Here's the sequel. I've got book two, and I'm really excited to read this. It's sort of like Everyone describes it as Nancy Drew meets Twin Peaks. That's very much true. It's weird mysteries, supernatural stuff in a small town on the East Coast, and it's very, very fun. Then I also bought Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. I don't really know anything about this book. It seems to be about a woman who's living in a house in the English countryside and then this couple show up. I don't really know. It looked cool. I was just in like a total, oh my goodness, buying things. <laughs> state of mind so I picked it up and this one was secondhand so this one was used bookstore so it wasn't too expensive a risk to take and didn't Claire Fuller isn't that the author who had one of her books on like the women's prize shortlist this year I think she did the underground one I, I can picture the cover right now but I don't remember what it's called anyway most of the books I bought I guess I should actually introduce this vlog I don't know what do we want to call it? This weekend, the 25th and the 26th, is one of the Queer Lit Weekends, or like their mini weekend readathons that they have twice a year. So I decided to vlog for that, and that's what I'm doing. Although, it's really turned into more of just like a general weekend vlog, because I'm not going to be taking on too much that's actually queer at all. I do have one book that I'm gonna read this weekend, or like one graphic novel that I'm gonna read this weekend that totally falls under queer lit, but for the most part I just want to keep working on the books that I'm already reading. I'm struggling to get through things and I don't want to start a bunch of new stuff. That being said, I wasn't listening to an audiobook. I haven't really been in an audiobook mood lately. So this morning when I got the bus into town, I started listening to All Systems Red by Martha Wells. That's book one in the Murderbot series. Everyone has been talking about and loving this book. I feel like, I know I've heard Katja of Catch a Read, Write, Create, I think that's her channel name. Talk about this book multiple times. I feel like I've heard other people talk about it as well. Everyone seems to love it and I see why. It is hilarious. They're short, like, I, they, they might actually be novellas in the print form. I guess they're novellas on audiobook too. They're like three hours long. So I'm actually almost done the first book now. It's about this, like, 
security robot who's sort of gone rogue. I mean, it's not entirely robot, it's like got part biological parts and then part mechanical, and it's somehow hacked its governor chip or governor system or whatever. Basically the part of it that controls what it does and gives it orders and then punishes it if it doesn't follow through on the orders. It has hacked this so that it's basically a free agent because it just wants to like do its job and then watch TV basically. Anyway, of course, things start going strange on its job and it has to interact with the scientists it's protecting. I'm absolutely loving it. I might actually just lie on the couch and do the crossword for an hour so that I can finish this book because it's really, really good. But what I want to focus on this weekend is Lost Acre by Andrew Caldcott. This is book three in the Rather Weird series. I've talked about it so much, but it's set in Rather Weird, this weird small town in rural England that's been sort of detached from the rest of the country since the Elizabethan era. It's also a fantasy series with all sorts of magical elements at play. I was reading a bit at lunch and I'm now about 30% of the way through the book. Not today. I only read a couple chapters while I was having lunch. I'm a ways into the book now, and I'm just finding it hard to get drawn in. And I don't know if that's the book or if that's how I'm feeling lately. It might just be that I would really struggle to get pulled into any book right now, and that's just like where my head is at. But I am finding it hard to like get into this. And I'm finding it hard to want to pick it up. It's pretty enjoyable. I just, I don't know. It might also be partly that these books are like overloaded. No, that, that that makes it sound bad. There is so much going on in these books and they are so rich and so detailed. There are so many characters. There is so much going on plot wise. No one knows what's going on. The reader doesn't know what's going on. Everything is a mystery. The only word that comes to mind for it is ornate. There is just so much, which is both a strength and kind of a weakness, it makes it harder to get sucked in because there's not one clear storyline or a few clear storylines and like containedness. It just, it's a whole intricate web of things happening that at the end will hopefully all come together and make sense. But right now it's just like, oh my God, I have no idea where everyone is in this and what's going on. But I have nothing to do for the rest of the afternoon and evening. So I think I'm gonna try and make some progress on that. I just want to pop on because I am making some progress with Rotherward. To be perfectly clear, it's been like six hours or something since I last talked to you, and I've read maybe 45 minutes of my book <laughs> somehow. I don't know what's happened, but... Oh, I did finish um, All Systems Red. That's part of what happened. I listened to another hour of that, and I finished All Systems Red by Martha Wells. It was so funny. It was so cute. I need to listen to the sequel now. Should I do a proper review of that? You know what? Why not? I just loved the character, and I loved the tone of this book. It had a humor to it but also a... I don't know how to put this, but there is such a sense of character, and without necessarily knowing that much from the beginning about this character or about this world, you know what I mean? Because it's science fiction, so it's I guess technically it could be in our universe. It might be, it doesn't actually say. So from the beginning, even though we don't necessarily get a lot of explicit world building or know right away how things work. It's one of those stories where I just 
immediately felt like I understood and connected to the character and understood the setting and how things worked. Beautifully written, just so funny, so fantastic. I will add my voice to the many people on here who are saying, go read the Murderbot series. It is amazing. Now, to get back to rather weird after that <laughs> tangent, I have made some progress. I'm now 42% of the way through the book. So like, I'm, I'm getting there. I just keep getting distracted. I had to make the living room cozy. And then I just keep having ideas for things I want to do when I redecorate my office. So I keep going down like little brain tangents there. It's very difficult. I am, I guess, getting into the book. The story is developing. One of the elements I find really interesting and well done is the fact that there's no clear sides. There's obviously the main characters who we're rooting for, and then there's the people who, as far as we know, seem to be villains, but everything is always being cast into doubt, and people routinely move and switch and not just go, I'm good and now I'm evil. There's internally consistent switching, People will make a move in who they're aligning with without feeling like they've made an explicit change or contradiction to who they were before. I find that side very interesting. That being said, we're 40% of the way through the book and it's still not really clear what the plot is. I say that because I've just come to a line that so perfectly exemplifies what's going on in this book right now. I'm going to read it to you actually. So a bunch of our characters have met up and are discussing what they know and what's going on and what's going to happen and what they should do. And then the situation is described as follows. The conversation meandered, but with a hard subtext. We cannot move because we do not yet know the game. That puts into words so perfectly what's going on in this book and in this series in general. And I think it's the sort of thing where I'm pretty sure it's not even accidental. I don't think the author is necessarily doing a bad job of what they're trying to do. I don't think this is the case where the plot is meandering around because the author doesn't know what should happen. It feels very intentional. It feels very much like conscientious meandering, the sense that the author is building this vast, ornate structure in which so much is going on that you can't, no one can understand because within the story, there is no one person who has talked to all the right other people yet to have put it all together. And as readers, we're seeing bits and pieces, but again, we don't have the full picture yet. I think this book is fucking with my head, honestly. Clearly it's fucking with my ability to talk about books. Sunday morning is that I was reading. I read so much this morning. The not bad news, but the like less optimal news is that I wasn't reading any of the books that I've been wanting to get finished lately. I decided to put on the second book in the Murderbot Diaries series just this morning while I was, you know, brushing my teeth, tidying a few things up, all that sort of stuff. I was like, I'm just gonna listen for like 20 minutes and then I'll get into the books that I'm actually trying to read. Well, this series is so gosh darn amazing that I just can't put it down. I've listened to almost the entire second book this morning. Now, they're only like three hour books, so it's not that impressive. It was the sort of thing where I was enjoying what I was listening to so much that I just kept like making up little jobs for myself to do or actually working on things that I've been procrastinating on just so I'd have an excuse to be like, oh, well, I can keep listening because I'm doing a little chore. So that's why I was scrubbing grout. I don't know why I decided that would be a good idea, but on Friday I started and now I have to keep chipping away at it or one half is going to be clean and the other's not. Basically, I was procrastinating actually doing 
meaningful housework because it's scary. But this book, it got me going. It got me actually like, okay, yeah, I'll spend, I don't know, like I think I spent 40 minutes down there or something in the end, just working away at the little grout lines with my little scrubby brush. And that was really good. Did all sorts of little things done. But now it is after lunch and I really, really want to make progress on some of these books. I did read a fair bit of Rather Weird yesterday, but not as much as I would have liked. I think I have about four hours left. Not Rather Weird, that's the first book. Lost Acre, which is the third book in the Rather Weird series. So I've got that one that I want to keep working on. I don't think I'm quite going to finish it today, although theoretically I could. I'm going to have to see how much like reading energy I have. I don't know if I'm going to start reading and then I'm going to sit here and read for eight hours straight, or if I'm going to start reading and after two hours I'm going to feel like, okay, I want to do something else. And I'm really trying to go with whatever I feel and not force myself at all right now. I don't know. Maybe I'll finish this. Maybe I won't. No pressure either way, but I would like to read another at least two hours maybe of that. But I also really want to read Queer, A Graphic History by Meg John Barker and Julia Scheel. This I don't even know who I saw recommending this at this point, but it's been on my TBR for absolutely ages. It looks really interesting, and I think it'll be a good thing to start with, right? Like, it's, I don't know, maybe 150, 200 pages, probably not even, um, long, and it's graphic. So I think I'm going to start by reading this in the queer lit weekend spirit, and also just in the giving myself a positive push of really getting through something that I wanted to read. Also, what do I think about this um, scrunchie? I bought it yesterday and it's it's huge. It doesn't, well, you can see, like this is my hair and this is scrunchie. And I think it looks really cute like this, but I bought two of them. My eyes were bigger than my buns when I was at the market yesterday. And I bought two of these giant silver velour velvety scrunchies thinking they'll look great on my buns, but they're just so big. <laughs> and I'm almost wondering if I need to get like little sock bun, bun expanders to make my two buns bigger so that I can wear these giant scrunchies because now I've got these two beautiful, gorgeous handmade scrunchies and there's no reason to have two unless I can wear them both at the same time. idea how to talk about this book it was yeah I just I don't know it's it's very packed with information because on one hand it's very high level it goes very fast it's not going into a huge amount of detail about anything it covers a lot of information but also it's not just like here's the name moving on there's actual like substance here and I feel like I need to read this book again to process everything. There was some stuff I was familiar with, some stuff I wasn't, so I'm glad I read it, but I definitely need more time to sit down and actually read each page and be like, right, do I understand this? And I also want to go through and pick some of the people who it references, because it talks a lot about specific philosophers and queer theorists and everything like that, and their ideas and their arguments and the evolution of the field, I guess. So I want to go back now and actually read some of the works that are referenced in here. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to read all of them because it's like an entire academic field that people do PhDs in for a reason, and interesting as I find this, I don't want to get a PhD in it, but there are some that I want to make sure I go and look into in more detail. I'm not sure who they are yet, again, I need to read the book again first just to figure that out. Definitely glad that I got through that, although not- it wasn't slow, but it was a lot harder to read than I expected. Not because it's bad, just because it's intense. If 
you are looking for a book that is going to make it feel like time has stopped while you are reading it, then Lost Acre and the rather weird series in general are for you. Or I'm not sure if I put that correctly. It's all very confusing to try and figure out, but basically I feel like I've been reading for like four hours. <laughs> But apparently it's only been like an hour and a half. So there's some weird like time distortion effect stuff going on with this series, this book. And I'm now 60% of the way through. I'm enjoying it. It is good. I just, I don't feel gripped. I want to. I feel like it's a kind of book where I have to be in exactly the right headspace maybe. You have to be in this place where you want to just absorb so much detail and have everything be a little puzzle and just like kind of almost open world explore and pay so much attention to everything and try and figure things out. I think if you're in that kind of mood, these books are amazing. But right now I'm in a bit more of a, I just want a story that's going to grab me and pull me in and carry me along mood. And... Nee. It's not working 100%. They're not, it's not bad. It's not that it's not good. It's just, it's not, it's not what I want right now. So it's not quite doing the trick. I'm going to try and read a bit more this evening. It's still quite early. I'm actually, it's, it's very early still, but I was feeling hungry. So I made myself a cheese plate and then realized as soon as I'd finished making it, that that would have been an amazing opportunity to film B-roll, but I totally forgot. So I'm going to give you just a quick overview now, and then I think I'm going to watch some YouTube or something while I eat. Just very, very chill. Change things up a little. Super quick cheese plate check. I've got four different softish cheeses from this really cool cheese market that I went to last weekend. Then a random assortment of things from my fridge and pantry. This is mango chutney that I made in a video last year. <laughs> I think I've called it out in like a couple of vlogs before, but I don't know. I always think it's fun to be like, hey, I actually do eat these things. I'll link that video up up here. Yeah, I think that's where it'll be. Friends, I think it's time to say goodnight. After I had dinner, I was like, yeah, I can read another couple hours of Lost Acre. I'm definitely going to keep making progress on this book. Absolutely. And instead, Murderbot just called to me. I should put that in the title of this vlog or something, because seriously, all weekend it's just been like, mm. or I could listen to more Murderbot. So I finished the second book and I started the third. I can't remember what they're called, but I'll put the pictures up here and they'll be listed down below. I am on a roll with this series. I just, I'm enjoying it so much. There's something about the tone and the writing style and how things are phrased that just fills me with so much joy. It's a pleasure to read. Genuinely one of the most just exciting things I've read in quite a while but for now it is approaching bedtime because it hasn't felt like it today but it is a Sunday and I do have work tomorrow so I'm gonna go and try and read another chapter or two of Rather Weird before bed but I'm definitely not gonna pop on again to update so I will say good night goodbye, good morning, good whatever time of day it is for you. Let me know down below what's the most recent book or series or game or whatever that's just taken over your life where every plan you have is just like out the window. You need to read or do this one thing. What's your thing right now? Please tell me down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like down below. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.